I'm taking great pleasure in welcoming <clears throat> the distinguished guest, Dr. Venkatesh, senior scientist in Division of Financial Economics, ICR, New Delhi. So, head the Department of Financial Economics, Dr. Sanjil Nathan, and <clears throat> uh, and head Department of Social Sciences, Trichy, Madurai, Kiligulam. Metropolium and all other campuses. Yes, in Dare Vala Vishnur, Ishangotai Kudumi and Malay, and scientists across campuses, and my dear student friends. So, on behalf of the Department of Higher Economics, Cards, and School of Postgraduate Studies, and Tamil Nadu Agrius University, I welcome you all. So this is actually, uh, uh, this guest lecture is arranged as a part of uh, the, the evaluation program. Okay, uh, so Dr. Dr. Venkatesh has come all along from ICR New Delhi to conduct a final five hours examination for the PhD student of Dr. Telagavadi. So as part of that program, so we have requested uh, Dr. Venkatesh to deliver a lecture on Enom. So Dr. Venkatesh is uh, actually, uh, uh, currently he is a senior scientist working at ICR IRI. And basically he is an uh, alumnus of TNAU. He did his agriculture, base agriculture in Madurai, completed Bachelor of Agriculture in 2002 and uh, masters in angro in 2004 and then phd from iri 2013 uh, so <clears throat> dr venkatesh is working on wide range of issues like agriculture marketing and trade agriculture development and policy analysis he he contributed significantly for the agricultural economics profession uh, he had done a lot of work on you know, so the impact of export policy options on Indian economy through SAM multiplier analysis. So SAM analysis is one of the very, very important thing, you know, so at macro level analysis and uh, impact of uh, varietal development uh, through SAM, valuation of ecosystem services, then impact of IPR, the role of rural non-farm sector in employment and generation, and agricultural law and and extension reforms in India. So to his, uh, uh, you know, uh, contribution, he has published more than 100 research articles in peer uh, reviewed journals. So few uh, recently he has published a paper on the ecosystem services. It's from elsewhere journal. So that is one of the very, very important uh, journal in the ecosystem services. Those who are working on ecosystem services, you know the value of the journal. Okay, so being an young economist, he received a lot of uh, awards. Okay, so I think there are so many awards he received. You know, it takes a lot of time to tell, list all the awards, but I just I would like to indicate very few. <clears throat> I think he, you know, got uh, almost all the uh, prestigious uh, scholarships, awards, uh, for the young group, okay. So in 2021, he got IAE grant uh, by the International Association of Agricultural Economics and then Uma Lili Mentorship Fellow Mentor Fellowship. So this is one of the very very important Uma Lili Mentor Fellowship that will help you to see every year they call. Uh, it's uh, <clears throat> actually the call for is made by the uh, the era. Agricultural Economics Research Association. Okay, so everyone, almost all the young economists are eligible to apply. So availing that, you can visit some of the, you know, so the international organizations or national, wherever you would like to go, you can go and you can work with some of the international economists, okay, uh, on the particular area. So that is one of the potential, uh, uh, you know, fellowships, fellowship from our uh, group. 
agricultural economics research association so <clears throat> you can uh, you can uh, also keep in mind and apply in the next year and then he got uh, some grant in the in the senam actually this is new new to me also <clears throat> i know only senai south asian network for economic research institute from bangladesh but this is south asian network on economic modeling senam bangladesh and then uh, you know you may travel grant art art it doshi art it doshi foundation award so he got two two award so this is also one of the important uh, you know uh, the potential <coughs> for the young scholars not only for the young scholars but uh, even the faculty also so the art it doshi foundation it provides two type of awards so one is for the best paper published in any uh, two any one of the two issues published by the era okay agricultural economics research association so accepting uh, the conference issue so they published two issues okay so in the two issues the best paper would be selected and uh, you know the award will be given as art idoshi foundation award and another the similar kind of art idoshi foundation award would be presented to the best paper presenters uh, at the time of uh, the conference okay era conference so he got both and then he got uh, the um, best paper presentation award from isa also majumdar award in so that is also one of the important thing and he got see so this is what you know so the success starts from the the student career okay so he got the best uh, pg jawarlal nehru award for post best post graduate thesis for phd so he his uh, you know so his achievements uh, starts from there okay so and so that's why i encourage all the students to work hard and do good work for your phd thesis if your thesis is a good one so you can you can have a, you know you can compete uh, for the jawarlal nagar award i said that is one of the prestigious award for the post graduate fellowships is concerned okay so <clears throat> so really we are very, we are really lucky to have a good person uh, here uh, to who is going to talk on you know the performance challenges and policy imperatives i think some of you also working on the marketing okay so marketing anyone is working on enum enum okay so there is actually a, you know so before coming here so we had a brief discussion and you know the last year actually the tamil nadu government also asked the courts to do uh, ass assess the impact of uh, performance of enum okay impact of enum so we did uh, here and we also come out with very interesting uh, uh, findings and interesting results okay i think he is also <coughs> uh, presenting the similar kind of results uh, so definitely uh, you know and the, his uh, lecture would at least trigger uh, at least encourage some of you to work on enum even for you were not though may not be for your thesis but for your seminar also okay so we are very happy to have you lentesh here uh, and uh, we are keen in listening to your talk so with this i once again i welcome you all uh, for this uh, for this uh, guest lecture thank you thank you for your nice introduction so before going to talk uh, the topic uh, i want to tell something for the students i think here msc only is there msc and phd uh, whatever the awards are listed i think you can also aim uh, basically it's not a big thing we are also same 8 to 10 hours working hours only so if you are sincerely uh, doing any any activity i think you can achieve it so five minutes i will take about something background about this awards or fellowships all those things so especially the sanam umalile that uh, sar has told 
So Umalile award is two type of awards are there. So Umalile era sir mentioned is uh, that is from era association that is from De New Delhi. That is up to 30 years of age. Okay. So which I have received is that international fellowship, which is from American Association. So both are American Association only, but two type of awards are there. One is under 35 years age. So those things you can try. So PhD students, all those things. And second thing is that SANAM award also. So SANAM is specifically for young research scholars. Okay. If somebody wants to work on that uh, social accounting matrix or CG models, you just to go to that uh, website. What if of any any proposal, any fellowship, any, somebody is trying just to go to that uh, organization. What type of fellowships are already being given? You just to see that what type of projects they are developing and how we can uh, reach. So then based on that, you develop your own uh, research interest and start to apply. First thing is that you need to try. You need to try. Don't worry about the result. All are not going to get. OK, but those who are sincerely trying. We may be trying for 10 attempts. At least one fellow will get. OK, those who are sincerely doing. Definitely they will get it through. So this is the fundamental thing. I think from uh, undergraduation onwards, the same thing is happening. So JRF, you have to prepare as well as uh, SRF as the same thing. When we are doing, I think, Saravanak uh, Master also with us, and majority of the each year, the entrance from the TNU is huge. So especially when air service under 25 percentage from the TNU students, but slowly now it is coming down. The numbers are coming down. I don't know what is the reason. So I don't know the dedication from your side or where it is missing. I don't know. If you try sincerely, definitely you can easily get through ICR SRF. Now I am I am seeing some of the students from uh, TNU. They are saying that even getting IRS interview is big thing for them. They are saying, but rather than IR, IRS interview and all, they are not bothered about. They will try for civils. If nothing is coming out, then they will come for IRS. But getting IRS interview itself, people are thinking it is tough. Means it is very unfortunate. Okay, nothing big. It's really nothing is big. I am from uh, Vadipatti, uh, from Madurai district. So remote village. I also have problem with English, so it's not our uh, mother tongue. Anyway, that problems will be there, but don't worry about anything. Only you have to prepare seriously. Any exams, there are syllabus, there are book lists just to prepare. I think you can easily get through. And nowadays, everywhere linked up, uh, I think WhatsApp groups are there. Your seniors are there. IRA, your seniors, at least one or two students, any subject you can contact. Through them, you can get the contact. You can get. You can come there. You can prepare, and of course, uh, professors are there. Any anybody will be definitely readily. They will be helping, but it is from your side. It should uh, come initiatives. Okay. So the message is that if you sincerely try anything, definitely you will get through. That is a fundamental mantra for me. I am doing this from undergraduation, post graduation, even work work also same thing. It is happening. If you sincerely try, definitely you'll get through. Not this, not this year, maybe next year. If you try continuously try, especially for PhD scholars. Many universities are there. As on date, if you try, there are uh, golfers are there for PhD for one month sandwich program. These things, that things. So you have to try. You have to explore. Okay, this Sana Mandal every any every time they are giving. Every year their golfers are there. Those things you have to try. So in your area, which tools you want to learn, which university you want to go. That you have to decide. So if you sincerely attempt, definitely you will get through. With this note, I want to start my lecture. So, ENAM, performance, challenges, and policy imperatives. I think uh, everybody knows that uh, since independence, government has taken a lot of uh, policy initiatives for the all, all the inputs, maybe land development, irrigation development, highly directly programs, other inputs like pesticides, irrigation, everywhere the acts have been there. And similarly, for not only production aspect, even the marketing aspects also, agricultural price commission, minimum support prices, go down, FCA, all those things to stabilize the price and better price legislation for the farmers. But one way we have achieved that production is we have self sufficient many of the commodities and maybe top in the world, maybe second, third portions in the many of the commodities. But one major problem is that. Inefficient marketing system. That is, I think, SARS period also 
they would have studied inefficient marketing system in 1960s 70s even 2020 2020 uh, 2020 also we are same thing we are seeing so inefficiency in the marketing system that is a major issue so periodically many issues have been taken in this context 2016 uh, this uh, bjb government has started this uh, electronic national agriculture market it's a pan india online platform i think for the benefit of the students i am saying that uh, it may be uh, similar to your amazon uber all those things the same thing the online platform whatever it is being uh, done this uh, offline so online they are trying to do so the uh, basic objective is that better price discovery in real time so removing the information asymmetry actual demand actual supply basis price should be uh, realized rather than the biased asymmetrical information due to that maybe price will be low or price will be high that should be removed that is the basic objective so what are the principles means uh, first one is that connect the surplus region with deficit region through online platform wherever it is uh, uh, the surplus is that that we connect through the, this through now the digital uh, world so they are trying to do this through digital platform second thing is that increase the buyer space so that competitiveness will be increased and better price for the farmers third one is that at the same time provide the more options for the buyers to get the more products across the markets maybe at the reasonable prices so these are the three principles so in this context whether it is working or not that is the research question so first thing is that what is the extent the implementation of enam is happening across the states then second is that what what is the trade trend whether uh, only particular commodities are being traded or all the commodities are coming whether particular states only is doing better or all the commodities are uh, coming and uh, what is the trade concentration across the crops across the states that we are going to see then what are the major determinants for the trade trade value how where the which states are doing and uh, why some states are not coming up that determinants analysis is there then third aspect is the most important thing is that whether enam has uh, uh, benefited the farmers in terms of price realization whether it is achieved or not so that is the motto of this then finally what are the implementation constraints and uh, perception of the major stakeholders about the enam so these are the things we are going to see now i think everybody know about this still for uh, especially for uh, master students i just want to uh, uh, brief about the process flow in enam emd so whenever the uh, product comes to the market it will be the apmc market gate entry will be there immediately after entry they will be taking one uh, and they will be given one lot number based on the weight the farmers farmer first time he is coming to that farm market means he has to go for the registration for farmers there is no uniform registration across the state in each each monday he has to register each time but same market he is coming means no issue the same earlier id will be there but different markets he is going means each time he has to go for registration once entry is there then this product will be evaluated by quality assessing things and quality parameters along with the actual weights the data will be there then lot numbers will be generated weights everything will be there that will be uploaded in the system once it is uploaded in the system anybody across the platform the online platform they can see the quality parameters as well as the quantity they can go for the bidding so for each market the bidding time will be different for example madurai maybe 11 o'clock is the bidding time so you can start from 8 to 11 and maybe uh, some markets in uh, ambur it may be 4 o'clock is the bidding time up to uh, maybe they will start from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock or 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock so bidding start times will be there and closing time will be there within that period they can go on for the prices once bidding time is over okay 2 o'clock is the bidding time uh, ends then nobody can access then once this bidding time is over the system will give the highest uh, bidder whoever that the, he will be the winner for that particular lot so once that lot is uh, done i mean that uh, uh, winning system is done then the particular price will be given to the farmers through sms if he is okay with that price then sales is confirmed so sale agreement will be done so sale bill will be generated based on the sale bill the trader will be paying and he will be receiving the product okay this is the system but actually on paper but theoretically this is the case but what is happening in uh, field level that we are going to see 
So basically, the, uh, there are two types of data we have used for this analysis, both the secondary data and primary data. Although 2016, this platform started to work, the enum transaction everything started from 2018 January onwards. And very uh, rare here and there figures were there. So for the analysis we have taken from July 2019, that aggregate period. So from July 2019 to June 2022, what, what is the case in the last three years that we have analyzed? So there are about 8.6 lakh observations, total number of observations in the ENAM. So each observation indicates information about the craft specific details on prices, quantity traded in a particular market in a day. So around 8.6 lakh observation over the period you have compiled. So this data is little bit difficult to get. So we have access from them. And it, it now if you see that online, now only one week weekly data will be available. Then last week data, it will not be available. But we have requested them and we got the information after a lot of difficulties. So this type of analysis you may not get. And uh, other information uh, like state level regulator markets, cultivator, GC, all other information we have compiled from various sources. Of course, we have done the primary survey also uh, in four states. In Tamil Nadu, uh, we have surveyed during uh, 2000, uh, 2020 before the corona period. So we have visited uh, Dindigal, Madurai, and Vellu districts. And Chennai, uh, Hedabis also we have visited. Then Telangana, Hyderabad, Hedabis, then Surya Pet is the case study. Haryana, Chandigarh is the head office, then Panipas is the case study. Rajasthan, we have uh, uh, Jaipur, then Mohana is the case study. So these are the uh, surveys we have conducted among the farmers, traders, and Mandi officials about this ENAM. Basically, we have tried, uh, uh, we have used three tools, that is Hyrefental Richman Index, that is for trade concentration analysis, then least square dummy variable uh, regression analysis for uh, trade determinant analysis, so here, what is the determinant analysis means uh, the ENAM trade value into total state agriculture GVA. So that we have taken as a uh, dependent value. So this is a proxy for the trade, uh, what is the uh, extent of trade in the particular state. Then other variables like uh, coverage of regulator markets, farmers participation, traders concentration, other variables we have taken. The most important aspect is whether price relationships are there. Uh, is there or not? That is, uh, we have done through Wilcoxon sign drag test. It is basically a non parametric test. Since the Safira Wilk test has shown that uh, uh, the data is uh, violating the normal distribution, we have gone for the non parametric test. It is equal to parametric t test. Okay. Then, second thing is that for uh, comparing the ENAM price and non ENAM price, we don't have the uh, exact uh, market prices for non ENAM. Although we have got agmagnet prices, agmagnet prices comprises of both enum and non enum. So if you take the differences, exactly we cannot estimate. However, we can find the directions whether enum is uh, giving better price or not better. Uh, I mean lesser price. So in this background, we have gone for the analysis. The major findings I have grouped into these uh, four aspects. First, the implementation aspects. Then second one is the trade. Third one is the price impact. Then fourth one is the stakeholders' perception. Finally, policy implications. So implemented phases of ENAM across the uh, country. So first, it has started in the pilot phases in the 23 markets in uh, 2016. Then around 16, uh, September 16, they have gone up to 250. Then slowly, it has uh, come to around 1,260 till May 2022. So recently they have updated the figures for 1,361, almost uh, majority of the states except the Northeast and the Jammu Kashmir. So this is the phase of development. The another one is the budget allocation. The budget allocation indicates the uh, government interest. If you see that uh, initially there was a lot of uh, budget allocation because of uh, already existing markets are only digitalization we had to uh, make it. So initially there was a lot of fund. Now uh, extra addition is limited. So it ranges from 1,200 crores to now current year is around 500 crores and uh, the budget utilization is around 60 percentage. Now comes to the ENAM coverage. So any this trade should happen means the major stakeholders are markets, farmers, traders. Okay, in that context, if you see that um, regulated markets, only 19% of the regulated markets are connected through ENAM. So remaining 80% are non-ENAM markets. 
Okay. In Tamil Nadu case, it is around 45% percentage of the regulatory markets are connected in EMD. Then farmers participation, we have taken the data of uh, uh, 2011 cultivators, state level cultivators uh, figures. So it shows that around 14 percentage of the uh, uh, cultivators are tran uh, transacted through ENAM. And Tamil Nadu case, it's 6 percentage of the farmers are transacted through ENAM. So number of traders, number of traders we have quantified like uh, per lakh grass crop area, how many uh, traders are participating. So it comes around the all India level around 120 traders per lakh grass crop area. It is there in case of India, uh, in case of Tamil Nadu, it is around 85. Then most important aspect is that traders unify license. So unify license is the prerequisite for intermarket transactions. You know, the basic of ENAM is that we have to connect the market from across the places. In order to do intermarket transaction, maybe Dindical to Madurai, Madurai to Erodu, like that, if you want to connect, we have to have the unified license. So, without the unified license, you don't talk about the intermarket transactions. The states, although Haryana, Punjab, UP, these are the states which is having high. Enum trade quantity. You will see then I will show the figures. However, there is no unified license, which means it is nothing but e tendering. It's not e trading. So e tendering, what I mean is that the within the market, whatever offline it was held, that is being done through online, but it is intra market transaction. It's not inter market transaction. The very purpose of the enum is inter market transaction. If it goes, then only you can expect the expected price realization or better uh, this growth, all those things. But unfortunately, it is not happening. In fact, government is not releasing this intermarket transaction recently. In, I have got only information 2019. After that, this intermarket transaction they have stopped to give in the uh, public domain. So which indicates that uh, it is not happening. So in case of uh, Tamil Nadu, it is better around 80% of the uh, traders has got unified license. And uh, if you see the growth, I think recently it is doing better in uh, around 115% uh, one, one growth is there in the APMC admins connection of Mondays. And of course, doubled traders uh, over three years doubled and the unified license, of course, four times. Initially, it was not there. Now, recently, four times increased. And farmers were. Uh, percentage is not that much uh, uh, growth is there. It is around 4 to 5 percentage only. Again, uh, if you see that uh, state level figures, uh, recently, if you see that 26 percentage uh, Monday's growth is there, around 5 percentage farmers uh, participation is there. Traders participation increased around 37 percentage and uh, unified uh, license recent period only it has increased three times, nearly three times in last year it has increased or remaining six, seven years over, but only last year is three times increase in the unified license. But it is one of the important indication that intermarket trans intermarket transaction is possible now. And of course, significant uh, contribution from APOs also coming up. The just I want to highlight here is that the absence of unified license in Haryana, Punjab and Maharashtra and Himachal Pradesh. So these are the major things. Now you see that uh, volume basis trade state wise and crop wise trade concentration initial year that is 2019-20 around 9 million tons of the ENA, uh, i mean quantities of commodities are traded through enam out of which 54 percentage from cereals then comes to the pulses oil seeds vegetables recent year last year that is 21-22 significant growth is there around 54 percentage of the trade quantity growth is recorded and uh, cereals concentration is coming down. It is a good sign. High value commodities are coming to the ENAM. So cereals has come down to 30 percentage. Pulses has come down to 6 percentage. And oil seeds gained huge. So 4 percentage to 22 percentage growth is there. In vegetables also, uh, significant growth is there. 13 percentage. And fruits is the highest one. 10 percentage growth is there. And trade concentrations, if you look at the concentration, in fact, increased. Overall trade is increased. At the same time, the concentration is in particular states only it is happening. 
and especially uh, the trade concentration is increased in case of cereals soils and vegetables but trade is spread across the uh, across the states happening in the pulses and other commodities other commodities maybe nuts spices those things trade is across the states is happening and major states in the trade quantity you can see that haryana and rajasthan together shares about 30 percentage in 2019 recently it has reached around 51 percentage in 2022 total trade quantity in india 50 percentage is coming from these two states only haryana and rajasthan however it is to be noted that these two things are recently this year we have gone for the survey thing is that on paper and off of the things it's totally different whatever it is happened in the offline they after the transaction they are entering into the online platform just digitalization after transaction is happening okay whatever if you see that online trade like that uh, in, in the page it will be showing but what ideally what we should uh, you know what is the uh, price everything is happening bidding value everything should be there but what they are doing is once price bidding everything then that price only they are uploading in the online so the very purpose of this by, by seeing the quantity quality all those things uh, quoting the price that is not happening so basically whatever uh, in uh, regulator markets are there that almost they are connected through enam and everything they are reporting as a enam or e transactions but it is not the case it's offline transactions digitalized okay as far as uh, value terms if you see that uh, 2019 20 its value is around 28000 crore rupees now it is around 51000 crore rupees it has increased and uh, growth rate is 81 percentage similar to the trade quantities cereals and pulses concentration is uh, came down whereas uh, oil seeds and vegetables is the major uh, emerging as a major thing then trade concentration also similar to that uh, quantity whatever the things things are the same thing and major state is now up is emerging as a major state in terms of value and its share was only 5% in 2019 now it goes up to 40% so if you want to see that uh, tamil nadu case it was there on uh, 8th or 9th position in the 2019-20 recently call, uh, call, uh, i mean value based it has reached up to 5th position now with uh, 6% of the total value share now we want to compare the total quantity produced in a state how much it is transacted through enam so paddy case it is around 2.3% of the total production in the country is transacted through enam and wheat only 0.5% of the total production is transacted through enam overall food grains is around 1.6 percentage of the total production and major state is haryana which is in terms of uh, quantity around 30 percentage of the total uh, paddy production is transacted through ena and food grains percentage is showing around 10 percentage then another one is the total value of trade if you want to compare we have to compare with the total agri gva so in all india level it is coming around 2 percentage of the agri gva so total enam trade value is only 2 percentage of the total agri gva and in case of haryana it is huge that is around 15 percentage of the state agri gva so that's what i i told whether the purpose is whether it is solved or not whether e tendering or e trading so the figure is uh, with respect to january 2018 to december 2019 only 0.5 percentage only 0.5 percentage was recorded during those periods uh, inter market transactions all india level which clearly indicated that 99.5 percentage is intra market transaction so it indicates that it's not the serving the purpose so what are the determinants for the determinants of enam trade values so the states which are having the more farmers participation and the commodities the share of uh, non food grains in total value of trade wherever it is higher there the trade value is increasing similarly policy incentives such as monetary incentives to the farmers traders and apmc mandis some states are given for this those states are coming better in case of enam trade uh, trade value now comes to that uh, uh, why this low Uh, participation from across the stakeholders especially farmers 
you can clearly see that first we have seen that minimum support price with the ag magnet price as well as enum price majority of the states for all the commodities even minimum support prices are not realized so this pink colors indicates the minimum support price for the commodities and uh, this green color is the ag magnet prices enum is red color so the uh, the graphical analysis shows that enum prices are relatively lower in many of the cases so it may be the one of the reasons for the slow progress in enum then we want to test this empirically we can see that around uh, overall ag magnet prices are more than enum prices in majority of the commodities out of 35 test that is uh, are conducted across the states for eight commodities eight tests are insignificant which means the hypothesis like that the prices of both enum and non enum sir there is no significant difference between these things okay and four test has confirmed that hypothesis of enum is giving better prices than non enum markets so especially you see this uh, the four cases is that paddy in uttar pradesh arghar in karnataka groundnut in tamil nadu soyabean in rajasthan so these are the four cases where the enum prices are better than the non enum markets then remaining 23 tests that is 66 percentage of tests supported hypothesis that enum prices are lower than the non enum market prices so that is the reason the farmers participation may be low now you come to that uh, all the uh, all the steps what are the issues so this is the enum trade flow you can see that uh, the first the registration of the farmers as i said that each each market he has to go for that traders case uniform trader license is there once he has registered if he got the uniform license he can go for any market trading but farmers case they have not have the uniform uh, id each market he has to register but of course one market one time traders license it's a little bit lengthy process if he wants to do uh, intra market transaction then approval of the license approval comes from the chennai office if he is going for any madurai ena then if he is approved for if he is applying for the trading license then it will be coming from the chennai office if he wants to do inter market transaction so maybe e road to madurai e road to coimbatore some two market transaction he has to do then that license that is called uniform uh, uh, unified license that approval should come from central office which is located in the hyderabad which is having around 10 lakhs uh, is the uh, i mean they have to deposit around 10 lakhs rupees for that license then interstate transaction see within state market to market transaction is there another one is if a e road a e road trader wants to get something from gundur market of chilli or something he wants to transact then two recommend is there one is unify license as well as the two markets uh, uh, i mean they both should be linked and they should have the permission to access the inter market transaction then only it is possible if uh, uh, if uh, tamil nadu is having that issued that inter market transaction that permission also is there but if he wants to transact with the uh, andhra ya yeah, karnataka that particular market a particular state also should have permission uh, should give the permission to for the traders so that 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 that, that is a problem it is not as expected it's not going up so even though unified license also there then also interstate permission is required but our case is that even unified license also only 50 percentage of the traders have got so this is the issue then anything quality are saying so why initially the amazon this any products have come people have not gone for that because they don't know about the quality what happens to that any dress or anything so once the quality is assured through amazon and the return policies everything are assured now it is picking up same is the case the if enum should uh, needs to be successful the quality assing facility should be uh, improved although government has uh, central government has uh, given the fund and even they have the infrastructure in each market but correspondingly they have not given the manpower there are big big quality assaying machines for each commodities but man powers are not there so quality assaying is uh, not happening and the traders are not believing that quality parameters 
so these are the things uh, told by the traders they don't believe those things so finally what they are doing if some uh, if madurai uh, trader wants to get something from uh, erode either he has to go for physically otherwise his commission agent he has to see the product physically then verifying then the uh, system is happening so the purpose is that quality assurance is the first and foremost uh, thing for intermarket transaction so if system is uh, can give the guarantee for the traders then only it is possible then most important thing is the online trading here lot of hiccups are there lot of technical glitches are there so if you see that mobile app also is the desktop app is there both are having differences the visibility weaving all the lots all those things these are the things is shown to us by the traders and the implementation agencies some apps are options is not visible in the mobile things so those things need to be rectified and also many minute things reverse order of the lot for example in any market 10 lots are there or 15 lots are there if you want to quote the price for the first lot you cannot quote it you have to come from 15 14 13 16 like that reverse order will be there so we ask it then why you have like this uh, reversing order uh, uh, the implementing agencies like e mandi officials they said that uh, if i go for 1 to 15 traders will not go up to more than 5 lots they are not giving lots for so remaining 10 lots are not given by the traders so that's why we are giving that okay 15 lots are there that information also we are giving but uh, it makes lot of uh, uh, complexities for the traders to quote the prices and another thing is that uh, there should be uniform pricing system but here what is that back wise if for example paddy per pack they are quoting the prices it's not the kg so in amur market it may be 65 kg one bag in uh, madurai market may be 80 80 kg one bag so this difference is other uniform pricing system need to be done and like the each system the data entry all those things if you see that tamil nadu i have witnessed three four markets i have personally seen uh, at least this online system is happening but uh, our uh, senior professors are told that in our cases our case, their case studies they could not find it but at least wherever i have seen there is a system they are uploading the data and they are uh, their online process is happening where they are stopping means sms is not working which means they are uploading the data bit, uh, trade bidings are given by the traders and sms are not functioning once bid is coming then they are uh, reading out in front of the traders and farmers which are is coming then okay if it is accepted then transaction is completed but in case of uh, other north indian cases even they are not uh, uploading the data lot and trading bidding it was not happening it's again offline mode by the trade everything then final prices only they are uploading that is the uh, case and uh, again this system online trading there is no save submit review options are not there if once a trader started means if he has mistakenly given also he cannot rectify it so again it is being asked by the implementing agency why you are doing like this they are saying that otherwise what they are doing discussing with them and they are reducing the prices so that in order to avoid those things once they entered we are not allowing them to change it so these are the small small issues are there and uh, what do you expect everything it is there you expect that everything online it's one in is sale bill generated so amount will be in uh, the trader will be paying through online to the farmer this is what we are expected this is what given in the theory also that initial flow diagrams but it is actually not the case you see that as of february 2023 around 2.5 lakh crore rupees overall transaction is happened out of which only 1.2 percentage is, is online transaction which means online payment happened only 1.2 percentage remaining is the cash uh, cash payment only then again we ask the farmers why you prefer to uh, go for cash rather than the online payment online payment is more easy they said no online we don't want because it needs 2 3 days to payment it is a case of tamil nadu but uh, when we asked about the north india that is the case average 10 to 13 days for getting the money farmers need immediately today i am paying means immediately i need the cash but here 2 3 days why it is happening 2 3 days you see the system once transaction sale bill is generated then trader should pay the money to the concerned farmer but it is not the case what they are doing trader will pay the money to the particular e mandi account 
the name and the account person they will be settling through the e uh, traders through online you getting so this is the case so lot of time it will take and some mistakes happens means again it is held up so these are all the complications sir. ideally the traders should pay the money immediately should go to the farmers account it is not the case it is going to the emandi the emandi person will again uh, send to the respective farmers okay and thing is that if you were the pro uh, payment product is delivered in online means means transaction is done then payment will come farmer has to go and uh, this this how when it will happen unless otherwise particular trader is known by the emandi officials then only he will tell okay you can take it online transaction is happening okay let it happen so ideally then what is what does it mean only intra market transactions so inter market transaction is again it is not the case as far as the farmers are constraints the till the sales they need to stay there in case of uh, today it is being uh, your mark, uh, your products are being sold and it, if it is not uh, quoted by any trader it is not being sold then you have to wait for next one or two days also they can next day or next next day they can quote so those are those are the things so payment also two to three days that is a problem and the farmers are in fact not aware much about this process they simply give it to the emandi persons and traders whatever they say i mean they are not much aware about these things they are getting the prices i mean i have given now you give me the price whether this price is okay or not that much is the level of awareness among the farmers but we need to educate them and uh, they have to actively participate then only the expected prices everything mm -hmm. is happening mm -hmm. even farmers are worried about that uh, products are being sold or not sold earlier what is their mandi trader commission will be there they will be giving what are the prices pre agreed prices they will get it now it is through online uh, uh, these things if it is whether is sold or not sold if at all it is not sold but 2 3 days again he may take back to uh, his, uh, out of the mandi so that uh, data also we have taken around 15 cases were there in a month uh, on an average 15 cases in amur mandi we have taken the case this data is not available so i could not generate uh, i cannot generalize but these are the cases even uh, unsold also is the cases is there but advantage is that no commission better prices really uh, they agree even uh, same 20 rupees paddy is through commission agent here but they don't need to price any commissions any hidden charges are there that is one of the things and the transparency that and all they agree with that as far as traders uh, concerns uh, they cannot operate basically they are depending on some computer for, uh, i mean computer system uh, some internet cafe they are sitting otherwise their uh, family members those who are sons are they are only helping them to go for these things and major thing is that uh, they cannot say, uh, sure about the how much they are going to get i mean if they are giving the bidding sometimes we, he may get all the bids value if he has given 10 10 uh, 10 lots all the 10 lots he may get but ideally he wants only 5 lots but 10 lots he will get so that is over uh, over also he will get sometimes 10 lots nothing he will get that uh, that irrelevant sir there he is not assured about what he is going to get whereas earlier what is there he will be seeing the lot that that time only they will be asking the uh, i mean the tendering open tendering that time if he wants he will get it if not get whatever the amount he wants then sale is over he will go now in the online he is not sure about that how many lots i am going to get this out of this one sometimes i may get over or sometimes i will not get it so these things are there and uh, of course without expertise it is not possible and they are also losing 2% commission from the farmers really they used to get from the farmers now they are not getting of course it is good for the farmers so that's what they are also saying that here there is no extra hidden charges all those things e mandi officials concerned is that uh, any season for example paddy harvesting season they uh, come around 8 o'clock within 10 o'clock they have to get the all the information they have to upload it in the online so that bidding starts from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock within 2 hours if 200 lots are coming 200 farmers are coming quality are saying everything need to be done but there is no sufficient manpower to do all those things so what they will do simply they will at the maximum they will see about the moisture content then simply they will give the uh, quality values and all so these are the my, uh, minor issues so basically we need to go for the uh, the most important aspect that unify license you have to give the unify license without unify license uh, in that inter marketing is not going to happen without inter marketing bias based not going to happen 
then competitive price is not going to come and we had to build the conference on quality and grading system so sufficient infrastructure as well as the manpower or skilled manpower required for this of course uniform price quote systems should be there so rather than the uh, bags they should go for the kgs mm. the technical glitches which i have told uh, that need to be addressed and uh, some of the farmers those who are neighboring to that uh, village also we asked why it, you people are not participating they said that awareness is a major things we don't know about all those things sir. we will come to the trading agent or whoever there then with them we will be selling we are not bother about this online system and better prices so those are the things and finally this is last 6 7 years 7 years have happened now we need to go for actual digitalization so actual digital digitalization expected which means otherwise everything offline uh, they are doing then simply after the record they are digitalization this is the double work for the commission agent also i mean uh, even the officials so this is continuously it is going like this means the enum actually ultimately it is going to fail so actual digitalization whatever they have mentioned in the uh, theoretical aspects that needs to be done so for that uh, sufficient infrastructure and uh, skill uh, and quality assessing system those things should be assured then only this initiative may be successful of course i am predicting that over 3 4 years that again trading is going i mean increasing but what level in near future maybe 2 3 years again next 2 3 years will tell about whether this uh, this policy is successful this program is successful or not so with this i thank everyone for this patient sharing if any more discussions are there i am open to that Good evening, sir. Uh, I am Dr. Salwani Isuran, Professor in the Department of Social Sciences, uh, Trichy. So, thank you for an excellent presentation, giving an overview of the ENA, its policy imperative, what are the problems encountered, and you have given your suggestions. But the very objective of uh, launching ENA is for uh, realizing better price discovery. Okay. So, and also information reducing information asymmetry. but uh, the problems actually we face here for price discovery is unless and quality assaying is enforced i have also visited some of the markets but the quality assaying is not at all up to the mark and the farmers lose the confidence not only the farmers the traders also lose the confidence okay so so that's why i i think one of the reasons the farmers participation is very low so you have made a broad survey of all over india what are the factors we take into account for enabling better farmer participation in ena so thank you sir for your uh, observations yes sir actually across the state and uh, it's basically even within uh, tamil nadu also if you see that farmers uh, awareness is very low even those who are participated in the ena when we when, when we ask them uh, about this process even they don't know anything they simply come and they are depending on the the commission agent i mean commission agent or uh, emnd officials the first and foremost is that the wide awareness and creating awareness among the farmers is the most important thing i don't think it is happening now and uh, see once we all talked about the doubling farmers income doubling farmers income so at least whether we are doubled or not but everybody talked about that so similarly uh, this also need to be in wide scale it should be given the awareness and everywhere we need to talk about enam so okay these are the things this transparency is there you, you come here and those type of things required awareness campaigns many things but it is not happening before that we have to strengthen the system you also correctly mentioned that quality are saying there there, there you need to have the, even uh, two crore machines are have there in uh, some of the mandis i have seen the two crore rupees values of machines are there they don't know how to operate it it was there lying 6 6 months it was lying as such because fund has come from the general government it is there but there is no skilled manpower to operate these things these are the things are there so first we have to strengthen our quality assessing and quality assurance then make the conference about the system then the participation from once the traders are coming here automatically farmers i think we have to go in this aspect traders should come into this platform then farmers will come all the traders you are uh, if you are bringing into the platform 
i think that may be the right uh, approach so there should not be any opportunities for going out of the market they all should come to the enam if all are linked through traders i mean all the traders are linked to the enam then farmers automatically will come here so awareness everything will come from we have to target the traders okay sir okay thank you sir thank you uh, a particular district or block is having uh, in that region is traded through regulated market i don't know to what extent that information is right or uh, statistically significant since you did a pan india analysis did you ever explore that aspect of your data sir thank you madam it's a, in fact a very right approach once we are comparing with the mandi's total trade value in enam ideally i also want to uh, compare about non enam market trade value but i uh, it the problem is the data availability even i approached the uh, commissioner uh, uh, gagandeep gagan singh sir that time he allowed the data to get from enam but non enam there is no consolidated data for even tamil nadu some market somewhere here and there it is not available but ideally uh, if if you see that uh, in punjab and haryana case wheat is uh, highly grown in punjab haryana but if you see the transaction value is uh, nearly zero why it is msp assured price so all the uh, total quantities produced is for uh, this uh, procurement for the pds so minimum supply price is assured for uh, wheat there it is going even haryana case punjab uh, i mean paddy is uh, coming around 30 percentage why it is only basmati price maximum it is for basmati price non basmati price yeah, minimum supply price is assured from the pds procurement so farmers are going there so whenever that uh, that it is not that then only it is coming here so for your question my answer is that we don't have the data about consolidated data about non enum trade value but you can see that around uh, 100% uh, uh, i mean 100 percentage around 30 percentage paddy is sold through enum in case of uh, haryana remaining 60 percentage and pds procurement is 40 percentage and something is missing which may be out of the transaction i mean of it is not coming into the market transactions this is the case with haryana but such type of information i could not ascertain about uh, tamil nadu maybe here also pds procurement is there that data if you see that then we can compare some idea about that okay total production is this much only this much is coming to uh, ena remaining maybe for pds procurement or other other uh, transactions thank you yes ma'am good evening sir yes. thank you sir for your presentation i had a doubt like uh, you said it is intra market like intra market because the farmers and traders are not getting contact directly through e mandis the product is getting transformed if the traders found that lot is not satisfied like uh, moisture content is uh, more in case of cereals whether they can uh, re uh, uh, they can give the product uh, again to the farmer and farmers have the guaranteed price or not uh, Once again, repeat it. So, intra-market transaction. If moisture content is more, means whether they will give back. Yes, What are you saying? Trader, trader can give the the lot to farmers. No. So that's what I am saying. Ideally, without physical verification of the trader or his agent, it is he is not quoting the price. If if system, they are not depending on the system quality. Whatever you are saying, that they are not bothered. There, somebody he physically seeing. then he is quoting otherwise his commission agent is seeing and quoting that case what you are saying it is not coming if without seeing that it then only it comes even i i, I have witnessed one of the transaction purposefully uh, i told when it is happening in mama and madurai superintendent uh, asked me this time you come i visited so somebody was quoting the price for guntur chilli price so intermarket transactions but i asked how you are quoting the price earlier he used to go regularly to that market he will purchase it now same thing but without uh, going there his commission agent simply sees the product once quality only he needs quality as well then then he is uh, from here he is quoting the price and he is purchasing but without uh, verification from anybody i mean somebody of his agent it is not being done so that case is not happening so uh, poor quality or uh, he is not satisfied oh case nahi hai i'm sorry <laughs> thank you sir uh, Good evening, sir. Oh yeah. So my doubt is, um, what if if we are going for inter-market uh, transaction in the future, if it grows, uh, what exactly will be the problem in actual physical transportation of the product? 
so who will take care and uh, what problems will we face yes this in fact i have missed in the presentation also once the sale is done then it is a duty of the buyer to get the product from here there it is not the farmers or superintendents or even the officers it's a buyer's duty to get the products now recently they have all, all ordered, uh, ordered the logistic app like uber uh, ola they have truck truck uh, uh, online system you can book the truck and those things have come up but uh, that data is not available how much it is being up, uh, i mean uploaded by these things those transactions are not, data is not available maybe in future we can expect yes right question who will be, who will take now even i have quoted the price from the guntur chilli it is my duty to get back from there it's not a farmer's duty it's not the superintendent duty so ideally his agent will be transporting there from there from there to here so good afternoon everybody so as a, any uh, forum so i am here to say the word of thanks so first i thank the uh, university authorities who have taken a decision to make use of the expertise available with the uh, external examiners who are visiting tnau to deliver a guest lecture like this so i thank the university authorities including the dean pgs next i thank our director cards you know he is not able to be here for the whole session but anyhow he came in the beginning inaugurated and uh, because of pre commitments he is in charge of uh, other directorate so he could not be here anyhow i thank him for the all the encouragements given uh, to conduct the guest lecture like this along with the final awards of phd scholars then i thank all the economists and scientists who joined the guest lecture online and they have also interacted nicely i thank them all those who uh, uh, spared their time and so interest in accepting our invitation and finally i thank the students who has also uh, attended this physically and they have also raised several pertinent questions clarified their doubts and those who want to work on uh, this uh, enamp system or agricultural marketing uh, i am assured uh, i am sure they get benefit out of that and uh, apart from the students our uh, pg coordinator dr tilavadi has also take pains in arranging this uh, guest lecture so he has also uh, make arrangements for the uh, final viva boss that is that is going to happen tomorrow so i thank her also for all the efforts you put in arranging this uh, guest lecture and i thank one and all thank you very much